This is an overview of the Flip Box Carousel Widget by Limited Elements, which is a carousel that is also a flip box. And when you hover over each of the cards, you can see the back side of that card. So over here, you can see another example and you can achieve all sorts of different awesome layouts by mixing together different types of content with a back and front uh, kind of card flip box effect. Let's get started. <laughs> To get started with the flip box carousel, the first thing you're going to want to make sure is that you have Unlimited Elements Pro version installed on your WordPress website. Then navigate to Unlimited Elements and inside of the widget library you can search for flip box carousel. That will filter all the different widgets and leave only the ones that fit your query. Now you can see that when I hover over this widget, it's not yet installed on our website. And what I need to do to install it is just click install and look how fast that was. It added it to my Elementor WordPress website. Now I'm going to jump inside of the Elementor editor and in the widgets pane, I'm going to search for flip box carousel and it will find that widget. Now I can drag it into my editor and start editing and customizing it to suit my website needs. So what this widget does, it's actually a combination of two different types of widgets that are really popular and that we had a lot of requests about this. How can I make a flip box inside of a carousel? So that's why we made it. You can see it's an interactive carousel that you can navigate using arrows or navigation dots. And when you hover over each item, it just shows the back side of that item that can contain an icon, a title, text, and a call to action button. So the front side has an icon, a title, and text, and the back side has the same, but also has a button. Let's go over the settings and I'll show you how you can customize this to fit your needs. So first of all, we can turn off the loop, even though usually when using carousels, users decide to leave this part on. Center, so center, the best way to explain this is to change the number of items. Since if I change this from number of items to, from three to two, now you will see that the middle item is in the center and then we see half of the other items. So this actually works the best when you're using this with an even amount of items. Next part is for the margin between the slides. So over here, I can make some more spacing between the slides. Let's just change this to, from 20 to 60. Have a big spacing over here so you can see how that looks. Auto play. As you can see that now the carousel is auto playing. I'm going to turn that off also because it's annoying when I'm editing that it's going to auto play all the time. And in some cases for our website, this might be the correct configuration that we want to use. Transition speed is for how long it takes each time that we move the slide. So I'm going to change that from 1000 milliseconds to 2000. And now you can see that it takes two seconds each transition. Dots navigation, you can turn on or off the dots down here, or you can turn on or off the arrows over here. So let's just turn off the arrows just so you can see how that looks. Looking awesome. Number of items is something that we went over a couple of seconds ago, but it's important that you notice that this field is a responsive field. So if you want less or more items on different screen resolutions, you can set that up. Stage padding is to achieve an effect like we have over here in center. So I'm going to turn off center and I'm just going to show you that if I change the stage padding to 100 pixels, then I will be able to see 100 pixels from the left and from the right 
from the remaining items on the side. So this is kind of called an offset carousel effect. And a lot of you guys have been asking also about that. So let's just change the section to be from boxed to full width because usually when you're using this offset kind of effect, that's what you will want to do. And I'm going to refresh my carousel just by toggling uh, on or off part of the uh, settings over here. So great, we got our layout set up and it's looking really awesome. Let's jump into the flip box section and see what we have over here. So the first setting is for height and this is a responsive setting. So right now the height of each item is 300 pixels. I'm just gonna change that to 400 so you can see how fast and easy that was to set up. Let's add some rounded corners to our items. So 20 pixels and you can see that rounded the corners over here. Trigger, right now it's just triggering once we hover over it, but you can decide to mouse click or trigger button, which is really unique for our flip boxes inside of Unlimited Elements that will just add sort of an, an icon over here that when you click on it, then it opens and closes the flip box, which is really, really awesome. I'm just going to leave this on hover, which is sort of the default that usually most people use. Inside of effect, we can choose all sorts of effects. And some of the effects also have an option to add a direction to them. And as you can see, for example, I'm just going to choose zoom in. And then the effect changed over here, which I think is really, really awesome. So let's leave that that way. Duration is how long it takes for the effect to occur. So if you want it a little bit longer or shorter, you can do this. Of course, this is in milliseconds. And adding depth is for when you're using flip kind of effects, which I'm not using now, so I won't demonstrate it. But of course, you can see that on our live demo on our website or play around with this on your website. Inside of layout, this is a really important part since now we can determine how we want our flip box to look like. Usually, in most cases, you're not going to want an icon on both the back and the front side. So, for example, on the front side, I'm going to hide the icon. And now I just have a title and some text. Maybe I'll want to have only a title or only text or maybe only an icon. So you can just turn off the title and the text and then turn back the icon, for example. That's just an example. And on the back side, I can hide the icon. So you can turn on or off every single element on each back or front side to achieve the exact layout that you want to achieve. Great. The next setting is Connect Widget Settings. This is for advanced users that want to achieve advanced layouts. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate this at the end since it's not for everyone. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. But again, if you're just a beginner, stay with the basics. If you want to achieve uh, more advanced layouts, I'm going to show this at the end. Arrows is for the icons for the arrows. That's pretty simple and easy, straightforward to use. And inside of items is where we edit the actual text for each one of the items over here. So you can see that for each item, we have a front title, front text, front icon. This is when using a trigger. And the back title, the back text, the back icon, and the back trigger if you're using a trigger. Then we have an option to add the button link and button text which is only on the back side so we can edit those and the other options are actually for adding overrides. So for example I'm just going to turn this on, I'm going to toggle it on and I'm going to show you that I can change the styling only for this item over here. So let's change the front background color for this item specifically. I'm going to make it like sort of a pinkish color. And there you go. So you can actually toggle on overrides 
for specific slides or for everyone. If you want to make all of your slides a different color, then you're going to need to toggle this for everyone. And then you can actually edit every single part over here. And there's also an option, if you don't want to use solid colors, you can actually add a background image, both for the back side and for the front side. So you can see over here, I have all the options to add a background image for both back and front sides. I'm not going to use this right now. We have all the demos on our demo. And what I'm actually going to do right now is show you the styling. So over here in styling, this is also separated into many sections. We have the front panel, which is what we're seeing over here. We have the front overlay, which is an overlay that you can add between the background and the content. Front icon, which is the icon that we see over here. So for example, if I'm going to change the icon size and I can change the wrapper size to be bigger. I can play around with those settings. Of course, all the colors are editable and we can also take off the border radius over here just to play around with the settings and get our unique design that we want exactly to suit our website needs. Typography is for all the typography. If you have some uh, text over here, let's show this actually on the back side since we have text only on the back side so if i'm going to change the typography over here let's make our title bigger and maybe let's choose a different font so for example i'm going to go for this font and now you can see that over here our title got the typography settings back button you can set up the colors and typography and everything that you want exactly like you want it inside of the settings over here. So let's just change the background color to, let's say, this color, just so you can see how that looks. And let's just change the text color to black so we can see it. There you go. How easy was that? So front panel, front overlay, front icon, front typography, and front trigger button. That's the small little trigger button that was on the side. You can see that you can also position it differently. So for example, if you want it to attach to the left or something like that, you can do that. And then we have all the back, same settings for the back. So back panel, back icon, back typography, back button, back trigger. Next part is for navigation bullets and navigation arrows. So right now my arrows are off. I'm going to show the navigation bullets or dots. So you can see I can just make those bigger if I want to. I can change the colors. I can change the spacing from the carousel itself. I can change the spacing between the dots. So everything is customizable and we try to make everything as simple as possible. To finish up this tutorial, I'm going to use two advanced settings, which are sync and remote. So let's just go back to content and over here in content widget settings, I'm going to enable remote connection and I'm going to enable sync, which are two different features and I'm going to demonstrate them right now. So earlier I installed also a remote arrow navigation widget, which you can find in the remote controls category. So I'm going to search for remote arrows. There they are and just drag those inside of my layout. And now you can see that I have remote controls that I can set up separately from my carousel and I can place them however I want in my layout and those are going to control the uh, widget over here. So it's connected automatically. All I needed to do is to enable it over here in connected widget settings and drag the widget inside to make that control my carousel. And now I have more flexibility over the design of how I'm going to place these arrows or where I'm going to place them and how I'm going to design them 
whatever I want. You can leave just one arrow, for example, if I want to, uh, for example, take off the previous arrow and just leave one kind of arrow over here. Later on, you can uh, uh, maybe align this differently and then add a, a different arrow in a different place. So really, you can play around with this however you want. I'm just going to center this so it looks uh, kind of normal. Awesome. And the next part I want to show is that you can sync this with another widget. Now the widget I'm going to sync it to is a background widget. So the first thing we need to know is how many items we have in our carousel. So right now we have four items in our carousel and I'm going to jump into the section settings, going into style, unlimited backgrounds and over here I'm going to select background slider, which what it does it just transitioning colors or images in the background and right now it's not connected at all to my widget so let's just select some colors over here first color is going to be green second color let's go for yellow and I need to add two more colors since at the end of the day I want this to sync with my carousel so let's go for orange for the third one and the fourth one is going to be let's say red so we have our four colors set up and now what we need to do is sync between the movement of the carousel and the movement of the background right now the background is transitioning automatically so I'm going to turn off the autoplay for the background and I'm going to turn on sync now earlier when we turned on sync for the carousel then it asked us what sync group we want to assign it to and now since the background is assigned to sync group one and the carousel is assigned to sync group one both of these are now attached and each time I'm going to navigate between the slides over here we're going to see the background changing color as well so let's preview this in the front end and click on the button now you can see that each time that I'm going to move a slide the background color changes accordingly and this can also be of course a background image as well so look what a special layout we added over here we have remote arrows a carousel which is also a flip box that when you hover over the items you get another kind of perspective over stuff and this is all connected to the background that each time that we're navigating between a different slide we're getting a different background color or image or whatever you decide you can also sync a carousel for example to tabs or to a different carousel to achieve a kind of a multi-level carousel you can see that also on our demo so I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful if you have any questions you can always ask them in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next video tutorial